the Cubs drop another late night heartbreaker. I'm sorry if you guys went to bed last night thinking the Cubs had that one in the bag, but I got to say, you know better than that. The Cubs blow yet another game, this one to the San Francisco Giants, and they fall in the series opener. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about all of the bits and pieces that led to yet another Cubs collapse. That and more on the Cubs Baseball Channel. Make sure to like and subscribe. Get in the comments section and just voice some of your frustration because I know we're all sharing the same feelings about this team. But here is your invitation to our show. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Cubs Baseball Channel. My name is Anthony Pasquale on Twitter at Ant underscore Pasquale3. Another really tough game for the Cubs to swallow. And honestly, this might be at the top of the list in terms of most disappointing, heartbreaking, gut-wrenching games that the Cubs have played. I received a few texts after the game last night when it ended right around uh, midnight. Uh, central time, of course, and just people saying, man, it's impressive the way that this team finds ways to lose. And there's a lot of different culprits, a lot of different reasons. So let's get right into it and start with the one positive thing. Justin Seal was terrific yesterday. He pitched seven and a third innings. He only allowed two runs. Uh, he struck out nine and he was just sensational for the Cubs, really provided a lot of um, energy and a spark to this team that desperately needed it gave the bullpen a nice rest pitching deep into the ball game um, one walk two runs six hits nine strikeouts he gave up a couple of solo homers and that was the extent of the damage from steel um, a really strong performance from him but he's now gone 11 starts into this season without a win and it's not for lack of good pitching he's countlessly put out strong outings let's just take a look at his last couple obviously yesterday seven and a third two runs exited with the lead before that six and two thirds two runs exited with the lead the time before six innings no runs exited with the game tied in that one um, you go even further you're looking at seven innings one earned run ends up i believe just getting a no decision in that game and the time before five innings, one run, and the Cubs end up coming back to win that game. He's been phenomenal over the last month or so, and he's just not getting any wins in the win column. And unfortunately for this Cubs team, they're not getting wins in the win column to show for it. The Cubs blow another game. Uh, the final score is five to four. Let's get into that ninth inning because the Cubs entered the ninth inning on top four to two, and all of a sudden they had lost by a final score of six to five. So I want to go into it a little bit and just go over some of the things that went wrong in that ninth inning. It started off with a pitching change. Uh, Tyson Miller was replaced by Colton Brewer. So that's who Craig Council elected with um, for the opportunity to get a save. Uh, the first hitter hits a blooper to center field. Pete Armstrong charging hard, ends up diving for it. It trickles off his glove, but trickling off his glove just far enough to allow Matt Chapman instead of a bloop single to turn it into a bloop double. Now there's a runner on second with nobody else. Now, obviously I like the way Pete Crow Armstrong plays. I think if it's anybody else out there, they're coasting and catching that ball on a hop, but Pete Crow Armstrong so fast that he makes it possible to make a play in that situation though. The smart baseball play is to not risk the runner getting into field position. I, excuse me, scoring position. Um, and just, you know, maybe taking your lumps and getting it on a hop instead of risking the runner getting in a scoring position. Now there's a runner on second with no outs and a beautiful bunt from Tyro Estrada ends up being a bunt for a hit as uh, the throw from Colton Brewer over to first base was not in time. Now it's first and third with nobody out. A sack fly makes it four to three Cubs. Now they're only up by one run with a runner on first. Then comes... Patrick Bailey as a pinch hitter and with him exits Colton Brewer brings in Drew Smiley on the first pitch that Smiley throws Bailey hits a ground ball up the middle just out of the reach of both Dansby Swanson and Nico Horner another softly hit ball the balls have barely exited the infield in this inning and the Giants have a run and now they have runners on first and second then a walk from Smiley loads the bases a 
sack fly from Austin Slater makes it a tie ball game. Now, when Pete Kerr Armstrong throws the ball in, Dansby Swanson goes to cut it, and there's nobody covering second base, so the runner tags up from first to second. Now it's second and third, which means first base is open, so they issue an intentional walk to Heliot Ramos, loading the bases. Now it's a smart move for one reason. It puts a force at any base, which means that the Cubs on a ground ball, in theory, could take the easy out and get out of the inning. The reason it's not necessarily a smart move is because it gives you nowhere to put that next batter. And Wilmer Flores came up to the plate, Drew Smiley struggling to find the zone, as was on display by the previous walk in the inning, walks Wilmer Flores to give the Giants a 5-4 to four win on the night that they honor Willie Mays by all wearing number 24. I will say an awesome touch by the Giants, everybody wearing number 24. But as a Cubs fan, this game sucked almost as bad as any game so far this year. It's been so frustrating to watch this team perform. And it's every game is right there for the taking. And the Cubs just continue to find different ways to blow the game. And, and that was kind of the play-by-play on how that ninth inning went. If you guys went to sleep last night, uh, a walk-off walk is the way that the Giants win the ball game as the Cubs fall five to four. They now drop to 37 and 42, tied with the Giants, three games out of a wild guard position. We already talked about Justin Steele's performance. Let's talk about the offense. They put on some runs early, a 4 0 lead, um, but they struggled again to get hits with runners on base. Um, the Cubs had bases loaded, no outs, only scored one run. In a different inning, they had first and second, scored none. Bases loaded, one out, scored none two runs in that or three runs in that inning. That was their big inning. They followed that up with first and third, nobody out, including a leadoff triple. Couldn't get a run across there. They end up leaving 12 runners on base and going four for 15 in scoring position. Nobody worse though than the newly acquired catcher, Tomas Nito. He was over four, three strikeouts left eight men on base. Michael Bush similarly had three strikeouts, and he left a bunch of runners on base as well. The Cubs end up stranding 12 potential runners on base and make 11 outs with runners in scoring position. Obviously, it's a good thing to have a lot of opportunities with runners in scoring position, but you have to cash in. Want to give some credit where credit is due, though. Cody Bellinger, two hits, um, had a a run knocked in, and Dansby Swanson might have turned in his best offensive game of the year had a strong RBI double down the left field line, a nice two-strike knock up the middle. He also drew two walks and made two outstanding plays in the field. Really good to see from Dansby Swanson, uh, but it just wasn't enough, and the Cubs continued to play uninspired baseball and lose in the most heartbreaking, gut-wrenching fashions night after night. I don't blame you if you went to bed because I hated the fact that I had to watch all of that last night. It was a stinger to say the very least. Um, I want to talk about this too. Say a Suzuki playing uninspired baseball. I think, you know, Mick has talked a lot about how he believes that it starts with Dansby Swanson, but for Swanson, at least his attitude, his leadership has always been there. Say a Suzuki seems like a space cadet out there in right field. He, um, continues to make plays that make it seem like his head is not in the game. We've seen some base running blunders. Um, we saw him get picked off yesterday in the first inning. Um, and then we saw a very lazy attempt on a fly ball toward the wall uh, that Suzuki ended up dropping. It knocked Justin Steele out of the game, probably brought Tyson Miller into the game earlier than Council wanted to. And the domino effect leaves Drew Smiley out there with the game on the line, which is something that not everybody wants uh, with this Cubs team. Just super frustrating. Honestly, we're running out of words to describe these losses. It's just the same painful feeling that you get day after day, knowing this this team should be winning ball games and they're just not. And the season is getting closer and closer to um, a full on failure. Um, I think right now, disappointment is the only way to describe this season. Um, there's been so many catastrophic collapses that this season is getting close to the point of no return. And uh, unfortunately, we've just had to sit through it, and and this team has been so bad. So let's do a quick standings check um, as we take a look at the NL Central standings. Um, Milwaukee still comfortably on top. Let's see if I can share this with you guys. Let's see. 
Here we go. We've got Milwaukee on top. We've got the St. Louis Cardinals in second place. They won yesterday. The Cincinnati Reds won yesterday as well. So that puts the Reds in third, tied with the Pirates, whom they beat yesterday, and the Cubs pulling up the rear once again back in last place, nine games behind the Milwaukee Brewers for first in the NL Central. Simply not good enough from this Cubs team. The fans deserve better. You guys deserve better. We deserve better. We deserve to be talking about a team not only trying to win, paying the money to win, making efforts and moves and trades to win, but we deserve a team that's putting wins in the win column. And this Cubs team currently just isn't doing that. Um, but like I always talk about, the good thing about baseball is they get another chance to do so today. Another 845 Central start. Kyle Hendricks get the, gets the go for the Cubs. One and four on the season with a 7-4-6 ERA. Obviously still a high number, but he has been excellent over the course of his last 10 to 12, 14 innings, um, including a really strong start last time out against the Giants. The Giants went with an opener and a bullpen day yesterday, um, and they still haven't announced their starter for today. So I wonder if they're going to do that again. Uh, they really only have two confidently um, healthy starters in Logan Webb and Jordan Hicks, and Webb pitched the last game before this series started on Sunday. So he's not in the series and Wicks is going to start the last game of the series. So the Giants have to figure out what they're doing for today and tomorrow. Again, the Cubs lose yesterday, their sixth walk-off loss where the other team walks it off on them. That obviously leads MLB incredibly painful way to go down, but Cubs get another chance to get back in the win column today against the Giants at 845 Central, another light one. But guys, thank you so much for joining us and chopping it up, talking some Cubs baseball on the Cubs baseball channel. As always, make sure to like and subscribe, get in that comment section. Let us know how you're feeling. Uh, let us know if you have any glimmers of hope left for this Cubs team that seems to be throwing away their season one painful loss at a time. But thank you guys so much always for checking into the Cubs baseball channel. We will talk to you guys soon, hopefully after a Cubs win.